This is Tara Carr from the University of Arizona presenting Mechanisms of Action of Biologic Therapies for Severe Asthma. Severe asthma is generally classified as either type 2 asthma or non-type 2 asthma. For patients who have type 2 asthma, we can identify high expression of type 2 markers in the tissue of the airways and in the blood, including presence of cytokines like IL-4, IL-5, and IL-13, presence of eosinophils and other allergic blood cells, and ATP, including specific and total IgEs. These patients tend to be responsive to steroids, but they're also very responsive to MAR2 blockers of type 2 inflammation that have been specifically developed for severe asthma and related diseases. Many of these patients have peripheral blood eosinophilia, and therefore this is used as a marker for type 2 asthma to identify patients who may benefit from type 2 biologic treatments. The specific therapies that are approved for treatment of type 2 asthma are in four different classes. The first is an anti-IgE antibody called omalizumab, which is administered by subcutaneous injection. It's dosed based on total IgE levels and patient's body weight with the IgE levels between 30 and 700, and it's dosed every two to four weeks. Omalizumab has been shown to reduce exacerbations in patients with asthma and also to improve day-to-day -day symptoms and quality of life, and also may play a specific role in reducing seasonal viral-induced exacerbations, particularly in children. This medicine works by blocking the IgE antibody at the site where it would land on the IgE receptor, therefore preventing it from having its allergic function. The medications that affect the interleukin-5 pathway are specific for eosinophils. The two medications bind to circulating interleukin-5. Interleukin-5 is important for eosinophil recruitment, differentiation, survival, and activation. Mepolizumab is a monoclonal antibody against IL-5 that's administered by subcutaneous injection every four weeks and is indicated for patients who have an eosinophilic phenotype, meaning blood cells of at least 150 in the past 90 days or at least 300 in the past year. Mepolizumab is shown to reduce exacerbations, improve lung function, and reduce symptoms of severe asthma. Restlizumab is similar in that it also binds to the circulating IL-5 molecule, but is administered as an intravenous infusion and weight-based dosing every four weeks. This medication is indicated for patients with greater than 400 eosinophils per microliter and also can improve asthma exacerbations, lung function, and symptoms. Fenrolizumab is an antibody that recognizes the IL-5 receptor, which is sitting on the surface of eosinophils, and therefore blocks signaling of IL-5 through that receptor and also stimulates other cells like natural killer cells to kill the eosinophils directly using those antibodies. Fenrolizumab is dosed every four weeks for the first three doses, then every eight weeks thereafter, and is administered subcutaneously. This is indicated for individuals who have blood eosinophils of greater than 300 and also helps asthma exacerbations, improves lung function, and a daily quality of life. Finally, a medication called dupilumab blocks the signaling at the IL-4 receptor alpha chain, which is also required for IL-13 signaling, so therefore inhibits signaling through both of these cytokines. Dupilumab is administered by subcutaneous injection, and for asthma has two doses, either 200 milligrams or 300 milligram injections, both of which have a loading dose of double injection and then are every two weeks administered by patients at home. This medication improves asthma exacerbations, improves lung function. TSLP, or thymic stromal lymphopoietin, is a molecule released by epithelial cells in response to stimuli, and targeting this, by medications such as tezepelumab, which is in late stage clinical trials for severe asthma, may help reduce the inflammation related to severe asthma. Finally, CRTH2, also known as DP2, is the prostaglandin D2 receptor, which contributes to inflammation in allergic and eosinophilic asthma. 